brain card as well. Um, sometimes, if they're, the box isn't checked for signature required, they might they may not sign sign it themselves. However, they stamp it. Uh, so, just wanted to get back with you on that. Um, let's see. Um, on the tape, we had discussed the kind of tape that you can put over the, the uh, thumbprint um, before. Uh, some of the best suggestions are the heavier clear packaging tape. That should uh, stay on there very well. It's not, not easy to get off. Uh, and it's uh, a good size. You can cut that down if you need to, but it, it is very adhesive. Uh, so that clear packaging tape that's heavy duty would, would work good. Um, and has worked good. Um, let's see. Um, the question regarding why do you need to tape it is it does have to do with some of those being returned for health issues. Um, so we want to cover those issues before they have a chance to refuse uh, the EDPs because of the uh, blood being on the document. Okay. All right, back to some callers. Frank, we have um, a better way. Hello? Yeah. Are you there? Um, yes. Hi, Frank and Terry. Yes, um, my question is, um, when we go to the post office to do the mailing, do usually they um, require a name when you send it certified or registered from past experience? So is, at that point, do we ha do we include the name of the registrar? Yes, you do. Okay. And, and we'll, we'll clarify that because that was a point raised earlier. Um, yes, yes, you do. Okay, great. That's what I. That's all I need to know. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, Francis, you're up next uh, on the phone line. Hello. Hi. Uh, Frank, I had one more question, and I wanted to tell, uh, explain my mental reasoning for it. On the birth certificate, it has vital statistics as the supposed author. On the naturalization, it has the district court as the author. So would we be sending it to vital statistics or to the court or both? I would send it to the court. Okay. That was my thinking, too, so I just wanted to confirm it. Thank you. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Frank. Uh, next caller we have is uh, Mike. Are you should be unmuted now. Are you there? Yes, hello. Hi. Frank, I had a question about the uh, EDP and the... Uh, Beneficiary recipient uh, number. Mm -hmm. Can you use that number in in lieu of or instead of the uh, uh, Roman or your name, or along with the name? Uh, how would yes. that be done? Um, how how is it done? How would it best be done? Uh, it, it some suggest that you not put your uh, the name of your name that you go by, on the depot at all, and, and uh, I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. Well, the depots and, and the deeds themselves have been carefully designed. Where uh, your name is included to the vital statistics, it's used as a reference point for them in order to look up the slave roles. Remember, we're dealing with tricky people that will find any excuse not to perform. And one of them is, if you don't give me a name, how can I remove you from the role? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Um, can you hold on one sec? Um, sorry, Terry. I've just got people who are coming over. I've just the time. I'll be one sec. All right. Thank you, Frank. All right. I do have a uh, comment here from a guest that uh, was giving us an update on the Arizona case, uh, the case for the plea bargain. The sentencing issue was continued for mitigation, so that one is still continuing. Um, I've got a good question here regarding, uh, well, it's like, are, are we uh, finished answering your question? Yeah, I think he, he answered it, uh, 
uh, sufficiently. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yep, thank you for coming on tonight. All right, uh, this is a reminder for any callers for just one or two more questions. You can press star eight to get back in the call queue. Frank, are you back? Yeah, I can. I can do a couple more questions, and then I'm, I'm just going to have to apologize for everyone that I can't I can't get through. But um, no, this yeah, is a so very good a call, more. and thank you for your extra time tonight. We we all really appreciate that. Um, if you have a two-page court order, do you need to attach an EDP to each page? No, just the front page. The front page or the page that the judge actually signed? Doesn't matter. The front page is the is the if the, say they send you a thirty page document or a two page or a five page document, the front page will denote the court, it will denote the matter, it will denote the key information. But as it carries over it might execute the signature of the judge, it's immaterial. The front will always have the header on it and that's the that's the bow of the ship. So we're using that as the responder. That's a public response, yeah? Okay, yep, great. Thank you for that answer. And uh, if the court is, the court officials are giving us a hard time, should we not finish the process at a higher office, possibly at the Attorney General? Absolutely, yes. And that's part of the, the change in direction here. Um, you know, the lady, 75, in uh, Idaho was, uh, was, was basically bullied and threatened by these, um, I mean, uh, unbelievable that they would behave this way, but threatened on the aspect of the lien component. Well, that straight away raises it from beyond Idaho to Washington, straight away. Now we're at a great, now we're at a great uh, writ stage, which will follow through. So I'm working overtime to make sure the great writs are going to be ready for all of you um, to take it to the next level if these local officials are not doing their job and um, are starting to use threatening as a way of trying to stop the perfection of a dishonor at a local level. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, there was a question earlier from uh, someone in the chat. Uh, if you are traveling and you get pulled over for an expired tag or some sort of situation like that, can you use dip diplomatic immunity in that? No, case. no, please. Look, it, it's all based on. It's all based on. Uh, one sec, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Okay. The yeah. police are now trained image trained, that anyone that hands them something with sovereign, anyone that gives them lip, anyone that says I'm a diplomat, anyone that, that even blinks it the wrong way, they have the right to tase them, they have the right to hit them, they have the right to drag them out of the car, they have the right to arrest them, and if they feel good measure, bash them a few times because the system is sick of it. Now, that, now I'm using extreme, but that's the extreme. There is no benefit whatsoever with people who are now image trained for that kind of mindlessness to engage in any kind of correspondence at all. In fact, it explains why, using the law of necessity, that one should not even put yourself in that situation. If you want to, to, to prove the point of the injustice with the system, then do it in the appropriate forum, do it forensically, do it with the law on your side, but don't do it on some side road with some gun trigger, tr you know, trigger happy uh, state trooper that's just itching to, to shoot someone who they think is a paper terrorist. Just follow with what they say, be polite, just don't give any lip and, and, and take it and then follow through with any kind of protest through the administrative procedure. Sorry for that long-winded answer, but I really, really, really don't want anyone um, uh, doing that kind of thing because really that's what they want you to do. And why, we, why are you going to perceive yourself up that way? It's the same as when you've been protest for arresting. When someone's been protest to arrest now, they're all wearing military uniforms now and they're trained that if you look at one of them sideways, they can whip out their batons, they can beat you down, they can cuff you to a chair 
and they can put you in isolation for 12 hours just because you looked at them. That's why I explained to you about the VC signature so that you have no reason to not comply in extreme stress to the process and still not lose your honour, nor can that can be used as a contract. All righty? Yes, very good. Thank you, Frank, for clearing that up. We have a question from guest 53. Uh, who is the Sanhedrin, and why are they the trustees of the Divine Trust? And if I'm the beneficiary, does that mean they tell me what I have from my, what I can have from my trust? Okay. Um, there is, we are doing some cleanup in terms of uh, the different spiritual entities and their roles. And the role of the trustees of the Divine Trust is the treasury of one heaven. And that is a purely spiritual entity. They represent the divine. The divine Sanhedrin are the 72 names of the divine. And uh, I'll explain that in, in future calls. But the whole purpose is that there are actual trustees that you can name and that if you weren't satisfied, you could actually bring to a court holding some authority to hear these matters. Otherwise, it would not be a proper trust, nor would it be an executed deed. But as far as the concerns that one may have in their faith, there are 432 officials that are being brought into the uh, structure, and they're all spiritual, of, uh, of one heaven, and it's done as a respect to all faiths, all history, and all religion. And when it's done, I look forward to anyone giving protest if they feel that part of that's not perfected. Because at the end of the day, it, it's representing you and everyone. I can't please everyone, but there is no reason that it can't be perfected. So I hope that answer covers some of those thoughts. Uh, did you cover the part about uh, can can they tell me what I can have from my trust as a benefit? No, no. The covenant of one heaven writes it clearly as to the canons, your divine trust. Now, your, your, your true trust is different. The trustee of your true trust is you, your flesh. You are the trustee of your true trust. But the divine trust, being a spiritual trust, is administered by the divine with the assistance of the trustees. Now, if you want to get away from words of trust law, let's talk about scripture. That would be the same as saying to you that the divine gives you and grants you certain rights. And if you believe in Christianity, then Jesus would be the trustee. And if, you, if you're a Christian, you don't want Jesus to be your trustee, then I think you have a problem. If you're, a, if you're in Islam, then you would say that the prophets would be your trustees. If you believe in indigenous cultures, then the ancestors would be your trustees. What I'm trying to do is accomplish that in, in good faith in respect of what this represents. All righty? Great. Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, could you clear up, you know, we were discussing earlier about uh, going inside the bar. Uh, one uh, guest on the chat was asking if you state before you enter that you're claiming uh, all rights, reserving all your rights before you enter, uh, or maybe poss possibly uh, asking to enter on special appearance, reserving all your rights, something like that, if that would be a good idea. Just, uh, you know, there yeah. are a few folks on here that are, that are facing issues that may, you know, draw them into the court. Well, the first thing is, first thing is, um, um, the uh, if if the judge won't start the name game, which is um, state your name for the record, are you Franco Collins um, before you enter the bar, and simply gives the order, um, please come in, please come and stand here. Um, then I would say, um, your, your Honour, um, I come here um, as trust recipient number blah blah blah, um, out of respect for the law, uh, and if you are willing to um, state for the record that my rights as trust recipient number blah 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 uh, are reserved, not preserved. Please don't say preserved. It's reserved. Preserved is entirely different to what th people think. Reserved is the word. Reservo in Latin. Preserve means give up. Pr uh, reserve is what you want. Um, if you say that, um, then by all means go in. 
but don't think by saying you are reserving